we have to talk about picking your next cornerback because, you know, ours is out. <laughs> He's gone, But Campbell has said if he is likely to be the next one up, but he hasn't ruled out Jerry Jacobs or Bobby Price quite yet. So, you guys, who are you taking at corner? Jeff? That right there, Jerry Jacobs or A.J. Parker, or, or if he you invest in if he. I mean, come on, guys. I, I, I saw some comments yesterday. Richard Sherman. No, absolutely not. Number one, he's in talks with the 49ers. But regardless, keep that man away from the culture Campbell's trying to build. He's, what is he, 34 years old. Uh, it may benefit to really give these young guys opportunities. Yes, there's going to be more mistakes happening, but definitely more improvement. Uh, you know, you bring back, I mean, option, you bring back Quentin Dunbar, maybe not. Uh, I'm okay with sticking with the young guys and Ify Malifanu, uh, Jerry Jacobs, um, AJ, J, uh, AJ Parker, those guys have displayed something in the preseason that you could build off of. Put them in, get some reps, and uh, you need these guys to start making plays and putting good film out there. So I, I'm okay. I, I don't need to – I don't know how Adam feels about this, but I, I doubt you'd, you'd be advocating for getting any of these washed-up vets in free agency. Go out there, let the young guys play. It kind of is a similar point with the wide receivers. Like, what do you have to lose? The secondary is already – one of the worst in the league. Why go out and, and snag a, a veteran who, who won't You make help a you? move for a veteran corner if you're trying to win now. Right. The Detroit Lions are not trying to win now. I, I know that may hurt your feelings, but the Detroit Lions are not trying to win right now. So let the young players, Bobby Price, A.J. Parker, Iffy, let, let them get their reps. They're going to get beat. They're going to have their struggles, but they're going to learn along the way. And Aaron Glenn and their, that defensive coaching staff is going to take care of them. They, this is a blessing in disguise. As much as you don't want to lose a CUDA, it's just going to force these guys to grow. Either they're going to sink or they're going to swim. It's one of the two. Yep. And ideally, they swim. And then you walk away like heading into next year. Wow. Like, they held their own. Like, we can work with this. We add this piece. We add this piece. We add this. We're good. You don't want them all to sink, and then you just don't have a secondary. It's, it's tough. It's tough. I like A.J. Parker. I think he had a very good preseason. Mm -hmm. I, I think he can do a good job. And it's a chance to see this defense without Jeff Okuda, which nece not necessarily is a bad thing. I mean, this defense is already horrible. Um, and people want to blame Jeff Okuda for that secondary, all those mistakes. Put some other guys in there and put them in the same position. Let's see what they can do. Uh, will the same mistakes get made? Uh, I'm just excited to see Aaron Glenn. I mean, this guy, yes... The, Bad defensive performance for the most part, but he doesn't have much to coach. I mean, the guy is. Oh a, no, he does. He's got a lot of a lot of young talent. But he's got I'm saying so much to, to do this to year. Produce results. I know. I'm not interested. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're okay. on the same page. That's there, what I'm saying. Like he's got a young defensive yes. line, a young linebacker yep. court, young secondary. I don't want to hear anything about coaching. They they have their work cut out for them. Yes, to produce results, but we're not looking for results right now. No. We're looking for the individual growth of every single yep. player on that defensive team. That's it. That's all we're asking for. I don't need you guys to lead the league in scoring. I don't need you guys to lead the league in yards per play, yards allowed. It doesn't matter. I could care if you're 32nd on every single one of them. Just please show improvement throughout the year. Don't be a Jeff Okuda and just not show anything and make the same mistakes over and over. Don't be a Panay Sewell on the right side. Mm -hmm. Awful all three preseason games. If someone's out of position, put them in the right position to win. Stop experimenting. We're, we're past that point. Find out what you got. Either you've got a young group of secondary uh, talent that can develop, or you don't. And you need to figure that out before the end of the year. It's that simple. And it's I think I, what I was saying, I trust Aaron Glenn to at least coach the young guys. Like, I think that's, that's a great he, – he developed for the New Orleans Saints. They had Marshawn Lattimore, uh, Marcus Williams. They, they developed a lot of young secondary guys in, in, on that team. So get, get them over to the Detroit Lions. You've got a, such a young secondary. Uh, Jerry Jacobs, A.J. Parker, it just keeps getting younger. So he's in a good position. Um, like you said, not going to produce results, but in terms of just teaching – He's a great he's a great mentor, and Aubrey Pleasant's going to be up there uh, behind, making sure they get the job done. So, um, yeah, just play the young guys and, and see what they can do. Start evaluating these guys. You, they cut Corn Elder uh, for for Jerry Jacobs and, and, and AJ Parker. Let's see what that why you cut him. Let's get, get him some playing time. So, start again, experimenting. There's no nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, again, I think this is the perfect year to experiment. See what you got and move forward. I don't want to keep repeating the same message, but I think it's very important for every Lions fan, especially the ones that don't agree with me. To really understand, you're in a rebuild. What, what are you looking for in a rebuild? You're looking to gain draft capital, see 100%. improvement from your young talent, 
and ideally you're making good decisions in the off season that'll take this uh, this team which i believe with the right a good enough off season can be an eight to nine win football team next year that is a big improvement considering i think they're going to win three four or five games right it's a huge improvement and if they get the quarterback right in the next two years well now you're looking at division contenders and well, congratulations, Detroit. Welcome to becoming an actual football team where you're actually competing for your division and not just starting off the season hot and throwing it off by the end of the season. Or, oh, all the teams are bad in our division, so you know now we can actually compete. No, no, no. Don't worry about everyone else. Jeff Okuda needs to blossom when he comes back from injury. Peyton Sewell needs to turn out good. One of your defensive linemen need to turn out good that you went and got. Ideally, Derek Barnes turned into a solid linebacker for the future. The secondary is god-awful. You're praying Iffy and A.J. Parker show glimpses, glimpses of just good corner play, and once you build something around them, a good pass rush, a good linebacking core, then maybe you have something there. But they can't do it all by themselves, so just, you know, judge them individually. That's it. Be patient. If you want to jump on the stupid limo with Fish and Art that they're going to go 10-7, and 7, you're going to be very disappointed, and you're going to hate Dan Campbell. I don't want to hate Dan Campbell after one year. I want to like him. So I'm going to like him if he wins three, four, five games because that's what I expected. If you're going to expect 10, 10 wins, I, don't, I can't help you. I can't help Art you. Art just gave you the finger. He's I don't very, care. They're let passionate. Them all, let them all they're give passionate. me the finger. They don't, what do they know? They know six years of losing. That's all they know. You're all right? a loser. So, <laughs> so listen, before, uh, we, before we get out of here, I, before we get out of here, I want to, I want to reiterate uh, – the Panay Sewell, Taylor Decker situation. If Taylor Decker is more than willing, which I think he is, he's a professional, he's a good guy, he's a captain. If he's willing to move to the right side, I have a good core foundation for the next three to four years on my offensive line. And Panay Sewell can develop on the left side and I'm happy. Fair? Cool. If for any reason I get a significant offer, a first and a fourth, a first, maybe even a third, I doubt it, but we're being, you know, Realistic, what can you get? Maybe a first, ideally, that'd be great. But a second and a fifth, a second and a fourth, I don't know what the value is for a Taylor Decker. It depends on the team and what they're trying to do. You know, if Kansas City goes down a player, if, if Cle Cleveland loses their left tackle, then you're probably getting a first-round pick, but it's not going to be till the 24th, 28th range. So right. if Decker can stay on the right side, I'd be more than happy. And if he doesn't want to play on the right, or if this coaching staff is dumb enough to move Penesol back to the right, I think I think the Lions are in deep trouble. I really do. And I you really hit it right do. on the head. Uh, it's the fact that they, they asked Taylor Decker, approach the man. He's a captain, like you said, and, and see what his thoughts on it are. Like, what do you what do you think about moving to the right side? Do you disagree? And and if so, why? And explain the situation. Like, he saw Sunday's game. He's not an idiot. He saw Panay Sewell dominate, or not dominate, but win that matchup, for the most part, against Nick Bosa, who, who did get a sack on him. But for the, for the most part, you got to admit his, his performance was impressive. Debuted game in the NFL, and he holds uh, Nick Bosa pretty much stagnant most of the game. Uh, Taylor Decker's watching. So, yeah, you approach him. You see what he wants to do. He's 28 years old. By the time the Lions get back on track, he could be 30. Uh, so it's like, do you trade him now while he's valuable? Just signed a contract. Uh, we'll see. But either way, it's an interesting conversation, and I'm sure we'll be revisiting Again, this. I like Decker on the right. If he plays, that's great. You're, you're good for the next two, three, four seasons. Right. For any reason, even if, you, even if he does play on the right and you want to move on him, move on. What's the problem? You're getting a first-round pick for a right tackle that you can easily replace in free agency or late in the draft, second or third round. You can even reach and get one in the first round if there's something out there that you like. Replacing Taylor Decker, it's not like Taylor Decker's the best left tackle in the game. Not Trent Williams type. He's not like a Hall of Fame left tackle, my mm. goodness. I've never seen anything like this. That's what you're expecting Sewell to become, not Taylor Decker. He's top 10, you, we can admit that. Yeah, but okay, that's good. He's a very good left tackle. But he's not the game's best. No. He's not the best of the best. So if you move him to the right and he plays well and you're happy with it, great. But if you want to move on from him, I'm not going to stand in your way, especially if that means Taylor, uh, not Taylor, Panay Sewell stays on the left. That's all I'm asking for. Because his upside is top five, top you three left tackle. You saw it in tackle. one game. Yeah. What Panay Sewell did in one game, Taylor Decker never pulled off in his career. I'll leave it at that.